gift of angels. We thank you that they're, they're always at our side and caring for us and watching over us. We thank you that, yes, sufficient is your love for us, but you always give us the extra with these angelic beings and these creatures. And so, Lord, we just thank you that they're even right now higher than us. But one day we'll be equal to them. And right now, too, even the word says we'll judge them. So, Father, help us to understand who their presence is and what they can do for us. So, Lord, I just ask you that with all the angels and all the saints, we have cause tonight to bow down and worship you, the living true God. Glory to Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, which is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And I, I like to, um, in our study of angels, we've been bouncing all over the scripture, so you get, we get a good taste of the word. What does the angel mean? Messenger. Messenger, correct. How do you say it in Hebrew? Mulak, M-U-L-A-K. The Mulak, ever say Mulak? Mulak. How do you say it in Greek? Angelos, A-N-G-E-L-O-S, which means the messenger. So now tonight we, we look at a concept that is kind of baffling, but it's really, really important. So let's see if we can share, if you go with me to verse 1 of Exodus 3, and we're going to uh, ultimately give you three points of what uh, the topic right now is the angel. Everybody say the angel. The angel. Now, if I said to you, an angel, you would think it could be anyone, but if I said the angel, it's a specific one, isn't it? In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So how many ways to heaven are there if there's the way, the truth, and the life? So why are we being told constantly that there's many ways to heaven? There's only one. His name is Jesus. So following along th that thought, we have the word the mentioned a lot. Not an angel, but the angel. Now you read this, even with the uh, Assembly of God, you read this many years ago, but it hadn't really dawned on you what the angel says. So let's go through chapter 3, and tonight we will cover at least 1 through 6, and uh, when we get to the idea of the angel. So, uh, he says to us, Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. Jethro is going to be the first person in the Bible that got a conversion story. Does everybody know that? And his conversion story begins, he helps Moses in Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 18, when he suggests that Moses helps out and gets uh, um, other judges. Remember the judges? So Moses uh, is overwhelmed by judging the people, because if you have two and a half million people, you'd be up night and day trying to hear all their cases. Hearing one person's case alone is bazo, let alone all those people. So Jethro has a conversion story. In, Jethro, by the way, has uh, probably nine different names. So when you read his conversion story in the Bible, there's lots and lots of conversions, like Ruel and Jobab. So he's, he's, he is the conversion story in the Old Testament. And who's number two, or really number one, number two, would be the story of Ruth. Ruth is the, one of the greatest conversion stories in the Bible, Ruth 1. May your God be my God, your people be my people. Do you remember that? So uh, Ruth and then, but here is, here is a, uh, so Moses was kind of in a spiritual realm of things. He is out in the desert for a ripe old 40 years. Remember the, the, ageism, the age limit of Moses, the first 40 are of everything. The first, second 40, anybody in the second 40? Between 41 and 80 here, anybody? Nobody's there? All right, so if you're in that category, you might discover sometime I'm nothing, especially the way they treat you at UPS. And then the, the third one is from 80 to infinity. And then you realize, hopefully by that time, God is everything. So Moses starts at the ripe old age of 80, 
He has a father-in-law. Boy, if he's 80 right now, how old do you think Jethro is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's almost pushing up daisies, huh? What do you think? Yeah. And he was the priest of Midian. Now, if you, if you, um, so again, we can see there's a little bit of background of uh, it wasn't following God. And who is Midian? Have we ever heard of the Midianites? Remember Joseph? They're called the Midianites and the Ishmaelites. You remember Joseph and the Technicolor Dream Call? Everybody know that story? Yes. Now, if you go all the way back to Genesis 25, who has all, Abraham has another set of children. Who, says, who, who are the children? Sister Celeste. Well, Abraham has. Uh, I right, heard the children. Who's the first one? 25 4. His first one is from slave. Okay, what's her name? Hagar. Hagar. And Hagar takes on the whole idea. Um, it's believed by Jewish studies that the name is um, Keturah. Keturah becomes Hagar. So he absolutely marries Hagar. Now, everybody look at the chapter 25 of, of Genesis. Verse 4. What, who supports Jehovah? Epha, Eper, Hanok, Abida, Midian, Delta. right? Midian. Oh, the sons of Do you, you have yeah, the same okay. Bibles? Yes. All right, she go. bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Midian, Midian. Okay, there's Midian right there. Uh, verse 2, right? right. Uh, Genesis 25, verse 2. See Midian there, right? Are you paying attention? Are you, are you yawning at me back there? So you, you, you can see there's Midian again. So now, who, who are the ones that came to um, take uh, Joseph into slavery? The Midianites. Do you remember that? Or sometimes they're called the Ishmaelites. So, how many know that a lot of half-brothering was going around? And right now, Jethro is, um, he is the uh, priest of Midian. So what happened to Abraham's children, the Midianites? Did they go to God? No. no, they fell into some type of pagan idolatry. And so we need um, to get these people free from slavery. Well, a lot of slavery going around. How many years were they in slavery? 430 years. And when you count down the 430 years, the countdown goes all the way back to the time of Abraham. So if we're going to have an accurate study of the Word of God, usually you say 400 years, but it's co correctly 430, because it includes Abraham in Genesis 15. And in Genesis 15, he sees to the end of time. So it's a... Um, it's a scary adventure to see the end of the world when you see God allowing the torch to come through and making a figure eight. Exodus chapter three. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness. How do you say wilderness again? Midbar. Remember that in Hebrew? M-I-D-B-A-R. And came to Horeb. Now, that's another word for Sinai. Do you remember Sinai? It, it's the same word. Sinai means the bush. Horeb means, Horeb, it means to cut. So we always kind of think when God wants to really cut your heart or really give you a strong message, you're at Mount Horeb instead of Mount Sinai. So let's find out what happens here. The west side of the wilderness, it came to Horeb, the mountain of God. So now when you have mountains in Bible, the word mountain means your encounter with God. So we got to go up to the mountain and that would signify I need to meet God, I need to talk to God. So the mountain of God now, here's where we come into the angels. Look at verse number three. Are you with me? And the angel of the Lord. See the word the? Now, when we study the Bible, we're learning uh, all the time 
to make sure we take into account all the words. So there you have the word the. Ever see the word the? I mean, no, all the times we read that passage, we totally overlooked that. The angel of the Lord. So how many angels are there? One. Now, I want to share with you three thoughts on the angel of the Lord. So a lot of times, because it says the angel of the Lord, we say, who is it then? If it's one angel, One angel means the angel of the Lord is who? Would be Jesus. And there is, by the early church fathers, there's a belief. Now this is not Jewish belief per se. There is a belief that Jesus made many appearances. It's called the pre-incarnate Lord. Now when you read this passage with me, you will see it has to be God. Uh, because it's kind of self-interpreting. So let's look there, but before we do that, I want to share with us who is the angel of the Lord. Okay? Now, i got to tell you that after the Bethlehem story, what happened to Bethlehem? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. After the Bethlehem story, an interesting phenomenon in the Bible, the word the angel never appears again. Never appears again. Never, never. You're, you're, you're not going to see it after the after the Bethlehem story. For example, if you hold your spot with me and go to the Bethlehem story, are you with me? In Luke two, let's show you what I mean. Go to Luke two. If you go to chapter two with the Christmas story, verse thirteen. I'll just bop, we'll be right back. So this is the angel that Jacob wrestled with. That's right. So we're going to we're going to see all those stories coming up. I, I want to do that story with you also. Good stuff? Good stuff. Now go with me to let me show you in Luke chapter two. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Luke chapter two, verse thirteen. And uh, he says to us there, Luke does, and suddenly there was with the angel. See the angel? Mm -hmm. Now that's one of the last times you'll hear that expression, the angel. The angel of the Lord, with a multitude of the heavenly host, here say heavenly host, Sabao. Remember the Lord of hosts? You've heard that expression before, right? So suddenly, with, with, and, and notice again, I always, I always say to you, notice with Luke, angels do not sing. Even though on Christmas, my favorite song still is, Hark the heralding. And, and by, you know who wrote that? Was it uh, Charles Wesley wrote that, right? The, and the Methodist Church? Methodist. I love that song. And... But if you want to be super technical, right here it says, they praised God, and what else, what else did they say? They said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Verse 15, when the angels went away from them. So notice that is the last time or so that we have the expression, the angel. So after Bethlehem, it ends. Why? Because we're going to see, point number one, we're going to see um, the priority of the Incarnation. So number one, when we have the expression, the angel of the Lord, please take note for yourself that the, the angel that comes, the angel, is producing revelation. And then here it's also producing um, the whole idea of who Jesus is. So it teaches, number one, I, I want to give you about uh, four points on this, okay? It teaches, it teaches us who the Messiah is. Do you believe Jesus is the Messiah? Yes. So now, 
Jesus comes through a revelation and God walking around in a body, pours himself into Jesus Christ as we know, and did not come to redeem angels, but he came to redeem mankind. So people now can no longer see him as the angel. Now that's kind of a, a wild one, if Jesus is just born in Bethlehem, who is the angel again? So notice we have the angel of the Lord. So is, what is God doing here? This is, how many know we're going into deep mystery right now? Yeah. Deep, deep mystery. Who is that angel of the Lord? Point number two. Point number two is, when we have the angel mentioned, it's always, um, it always is, teaches us the priority of the Word of God. That Jesus and the Word of God give us revelation. So we're going to have revelation, number one. Uh, we, we, number two, we're going to have the incarnation shown to us. So this is really, really, really important to, to understand what the angel of the Lord does. So we're going to, we're going to see that in our study of the angel. Number three. When we have the expression, the angel of the Lord, it teaches us how precious salvation is, that God would even prepare our ways. Does everybody remember the story in the book of Daniel when they were thrown into the fire and it says one like a son of man, son of man was there. And so there's another pre-incarnate understanding who's the son of man, the suffering servant. So that would be the Lord Jesus again appearing. So there we have these, and, and the big word is already on the board for you, theophany. Everybody remember theophany? T-H-E-O-P-H-A-N-Y. T-H-E-O-P-H-A-N-Y. And I, I just want to show you something because I've been studying Hebrew this morning. And when I was studying Hebrew, something really was so loud and beautiful about God. And I just don't want today to pass without that loudness and the beauty of who God is. In Psalm 118, Psalm 118, who wrote the Psalms? He wrote how many of them? 73, very good. You're all getting right answers here, huh? Psalm 118, now, you can't read this in English, so we got to read it in Hebrew. But there's a problem here. You don't read Hebrew. <laughs> so, that means we got to tr trust what we read. If you go to Psalm 118, one four, uh, four, Psalm 118, verse 14. And this is the beauty of seeing the angel and the incarnation. Now, when you re read it in English, just to remind us of the of fact, every time you read it in English, it doesn't necessarily say that in the original, okay? So I want to go way into the deepest part, perhaps, ever before in that verse. Psalm 118, verse 14, here's what it says. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Now, remember, one of the points to say, the angel. Remember, it's the incarnation. What's the second one? To connect Jesus and the Word of God. Okay, remember, remember we said the word is theophany. God plus the word manifest, God manifesting himself. So uh, when God is speaking in the Bible, the early church fathers have always taught that it was Jesus speaking. Because from the very fact when we read the scriptures in John 1, 1, the Word became flesh. Okay? The Word was God. John 1, 14, the Word became flesh and dwells among us. So now, if you go with me, I just want to show you this. This is really, really good. Okay? Turn to the person next to you and say, this is good. This is good. He says to us, verse 14, the Lord is my strength and my song. Now, I, I, I want to teach you a little background of the background, if, if you would indulge me for a few brief moments. When you look at the Hebrew, they have on the Bible verses little, little dots and notes. 
and then they have more notes on those, what all those little dots mean. When you look at this text, it's filled with all those dots. And I, I want to give you an expression if you ever want to study the Bible. This is called the Masoretic text, called the MT, the Masoretic text. When, when you were here in the Bible and studied, someone would say the Masoretic text. That means it's going back to the ancient, ancient Hebrew. So I want to share with you what the Masoretic text says for this. The Lord is my strength and my song. It doesn't say that. Here's what it says. Ready, let me do the happy dance. The Lord is my strength and he is singing to you. Mm. I think that's a little bit better. Now, let, let me give you another scripture on that. I'll, I'll give you the Hebrew word too. The word is Zamar, Z A M A R. I'll write it on the board for you. Z A M A R. Zamar. The Lord is singing to you. Did God sing? Yes. We always, when, when we have song, we usually do what? Sing to Him. But now, God does what? Sing to him. He sings to you. God will sing over you when he, in, in the, the book of Habakkuk 3.17, when, when you're walking as his son or daughter and you begin to praise him, when you become people of renown to who he is, it, the Bible says, the Lord will rejoice over you. The, the, the Father will dance as on the day of joy. He will exalt over you. And that's God singing over you because of He sees how beautiful your soul is becoming. So now He's singing because of the renown that you have become in Him. So there's the whole idea. Now I'm going to put on, I'll put on the board the MT. And that doesn't mean mass transit. <laughs> Okay, MT means the Masoretic Text. It's a very ancient way of reading the Bible. When you read the Bible like this, it, the, the literal meaning is God is singing over you. So when he has the angel of the Lord pronouncing all these things at Bethlehem, the last mention of the angel, I'll be right with you, the angel that because the Christ is born. And so now he doesn't come to see us as the angel. So what do you read? You read an angel of the Lord. Are, are you getting it? Okay. So now the fourth thing, I, I think I gave you three. The fourth thing about the, um, the angel of the Lord teaches priority between Jesus and the Word. Um, it teaches us here um, the power of uh, the Incarnation. It tells us the big meaning of our salvation. The fourth thing is when we have the, the angel. The angel of the Lord is, teaches us the, uh, the purpose of uh, pursuing, uh, of really uh, going after Messiah, really seeking the Messiah. Uh, it really um, if you just make a rhyme with me, we're not done with Isaiah yet, if you noticed. I'm not done, no one exists. If you go with me now, um, let me show you what I mean. If you go with me to Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. Isaiah the 63rd chapter, verse number 9. Verse number 9. And notice we get the word, the angel again. Isaiah 63, verse 9. If you're there, say, Amen. Amen. If you're slow, you are not good Bible students. Let's get going here. Isaiah 60. I, I, ha I, have, a, I have a kid that, that sits in front of me every day. And when I ask him a question, He's on that machine, and he gives me the answer right away. <laughs> when he doesn't know it, I'll give you the answer in a second. Okay, so, okay, so he, 
Uh, he's the fastest kid I ever seen on those machines. He can. Uh, he's only seventh grade. He goes, the answer is. Okay, everybody with me? I just want to show you that. Then we'll go back to him. Sixty-three nine. In their affliction, he was afflicted. So there's pursuing the Messiah, and the angel of his presence. What does it say there? The angel of your underline out there of his presence saved them. So now we can see the purpose of the angel is to what? Uh, save us. Go on with me, read the rest of the verse there with me. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them. He lifted them up. How do you say lift up? Nassau. Here we are that word Nassau. And carried them all the days of old. How many know that that's the power of the angels, what they're doing for us? So this is the pre-incarnate presence of God. Everybody got all the four points of who the angel of uh, sister. Father, um, the angel of the Lord is mentioned um, before the incarnation. Does that correspond to the fact that it is said of Jesus that he became a little lower than the angels. Sonny. So he's going from the angel of the Lord to the incarnate. Right. Yeah. <coughs> there may be an alternative where the angel of the Lord is actually God in visible form, like Matthew 28, 2. The angel of the Lord removes the boulder from the tomb. So it's not Jesus removing it. It's the Father. Where, what, Matthew 28, 2, do you say? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it could be my Bible is, you know, in not Bible. Bible. <laughs> now, because... Okay. What, what happens, what happens, what you're going to find out now. Now, I, I, must, I must say that um, this is not without, no, my Bible says an angel. Okay. okay. Thank you for the correction. I have one question. Okay. Oh. An angel of the Lord. Thank you. Because it does not say the angel of the Lord until, until the birth, and then that's it. So the last, the angel is up in the sky. I think Jesus was doing double duty that night. Okay. Yes, dear. Yes. I oh, I have a question. You said it was the last time at Bethlehem that the angels were mentioned. No, 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 no. The angel was oh, mentioned. The angel. Yes. Okay. But um what about other times when uh, we see angels? That's an angel. That's an, an angel. angel. Versus the angel. Versus an the angel. Oh, okay, an angel. That's what I was wondering. And about. you get a new Bible, sir. Read it. You got a present for him. Okay. It's got an incorrect Bible. But Peter, your Bible says. It just says, uh, you mean the reference in 63? No, Matthew. No, Matthew 28, too. Mine says Anthony. An angel, yeah. And, and so he's always functioning as an angel of the Lord pre-incarnation. Right. So the angel of the Lord. And right. then at incarnation, he can right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yes, Shopo, Shopo. An angel. Okay, you better say that. But it's the same <laughs> Korean. I, I, uh, that's a lot of background. You can take a deep breath before we go back to let's go back to Exodus three. I, I just I just want to show you that, okay? And then I want to show you a few more of the angel of the Lord. Okay? So back with me in Exodus, everybody with me in Exodus again? We didn't finish our study there. Now Moses is keeping flock of his father in law Jethro, the priest of Midian, in his flock to the uh, and he led his flock to the west side. Of the wilderness, he came to Horeb. Horeb means what? The cut, uh, the mountain of God. The angel, or every circle word, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. Now, now let's watch this here. Uh, I want you to notice one sentence says one thing, and then it says God, and then we're back. So, notice the switch. 
one ten times says this, then the switch, okay? It's gonna say the angel of the Lord, then it's gonna say God. So how do we get our conclusion? It's what? God, isn't it? It's both. So that's how we're gonna let, let's read this and then we, 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 we explain because we are studying the Bible. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the bush, the midst of a bush, and he looked and behold, the bush was burning and it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush. Hello? Now, if you draw the connection between God and the angel there, everybody see it? Everybody, everybody see the connectoid? Alrighty. Good stuff. Now let's go back and fill in all the pieces as we study the Bible. So right, right now we have, we're at Horeb. We have the angel of the Lord. Yes. Appeared to him in a flame of fire. Now here in, in, um, in the desert area, the Midbar, M-I-D-B-A-R, there is what is called a spontaneous combustion. We believe the bush was about three and a half feet high. So what is that about this high? And what, what happened is because of the fiery power outside, on, on this little bush they had little little bulbs and, and when they were burnt and ex they would explode and then fire would take over the whole being. So the bush was on fire by the power of just being there. And then when Moses is coming up, he's coming up a very, very narrow path, extremely narrow. When he's coming up that narrow path, and the Jewish people kind of relate that story to um, a whole idea of an Esther going in to speak to King Ahasuerus. That means she shouldn't have really been there because her life was on the, on the line, so she was on a narrow path. So if you know the story of Esther, and that she had to save the Jews. So now what, what does Moses have to do? He's on a narrow path, he sees this, this light on the, the, on the west side, and so what kind of, where's the west side? It's the side of the sun going down, and things are really starting to what? Light up for him. When pilgrims get a chance to go there, and I still want to go there, is you have to leave your hotel about, you know, 3.34 in the morning, to get up there, to travel up there, and to see the spot where that happened. So it's not an easy journey to make, and you're gonna lose a lot of sleep on the way. But with my B and H camera, we will be tough. <laughs> we will make it. Okay, so I, I get up. So what happens here is we can see a whole bush on fire, and that's what the word Sinai means, the fire. And so what happens is when he's looking at that bush. What does he see? He sees the angel of the Lord inside of it. He sees the angel of the Lord in it. And why? Because this is the message of salvation. Do you think he's scared? If you have a, a figure coming out of a bush, I think you're scared. How many know on Sunday school we won't, we won't teach the kids all of the, all of the, the background there? The angel of the Lord came to him in a flame of fire. Now, if you underline the word fire there, the angel comes out of the fire because the fire in Hebrew is the word esh, E-S-H, okay? Remember the word Jesus is Yeshua, remember? E-S-H, everybody say E-S-H. Okay, so Yeshua, so what does the name Jesus mean? The fire is one. Coming, coming from the power of the fire, okay? The fire one. So this is really, really, uh, and that's Deuteronomy 5. So every time you get a kind of glimpse of God in the Old Testament, it's fire. Now what happens to us on Pentecost Sunday? You have fire. So notice that what, how God was first revealed, Deuteronomy 5, to our Pentecost experience. Now when we look upstairs, uh, what happens to the people upstairs, they don't look fired up to me. They look like I should take a shovel and throw dirt on them. <laughs> <laughs> and in Christian love, everything I do is in yeah. Christian love, all right? And please do not bring your B&H special then. Okay, they just, they look kind of morta, morta, and 
Martha baby. Amen? So we, we can see there, brothers and sisters, that we can, we can see a lot of connections right now. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a fire out of the midst of a bush. Now, the word in Hebrew for out of the midst is a beautiful one. Uh, I'll give you the Hebrew words. The word is betok, B-E-T-O-K. Ever say betok? B-E-T-O-K. Betok. You got that, Brother Peter? B-E-T-O-K. In the midst. Out of the midst. So when you come out of the midst, it's like coming out of the womb. So the birthing of our understanding of who God is. Remember, if you put, put yourself there with a little note for yourself, this is God allowing himself to be seen by us. So what's the first time, uh, one of the first times God is seen? And remember, Moses is going to have a conversation, and Moses is going to see the backside. So all of this is birthing to him a revelation of God. Wow, this is incredible, a birthing of God. How many think you're getting good stuff now? And he says there, and yet he looked, and behold, the bush was burning, and it was not consumed. Now, when Jesus is walking into Yerushalayim, in John chapter 2, he says, zeal for your house will consume me. But now, with this angel in there, it can't be consumed because it's in the angel. The angel. But notice we believe that this is the voice of Jesus speaking. Just giving you a moment to think about that. Are your wheels turning? The bush was burning and it was not consumed. Now Moses opens conversation. Was that his original name? Now remember Moses' name means given by the um, Pharaoh's daughter, Moshe. Let me say Moshe. Moshe. It means drawn out of water. So he sees the fire, and then water man. Now this is called the fire inside the water. How many like that image? That's enough to meditate on for the rest of your life. The fire inside the water. Whoa. So Moses is having, he says there, water man, I will turn aside and see this great sight. Now what God had to do to this octarian was get his attention. So how do you get his attention? Because a lot of plants back then were on fire all the time. How do you get this? Because he kept seeing it from a distance. He walks up that narrow path like an Esther going into Ahasuerus in the book of uh, Esther chapter 4. And it's kind of scary to kind of walk that path. Because this is all about a salvation message, isn't it? When you, when you are saved and come to Christ, remember, I don't say this bragging about anybody here, we, we the redeemed shall be strong. And when we the redeemed shall be strong, it's not everybody. God wants everybody, but there's a few of us who will choose and walk that path. Going through the narrow, narrow passage up there. And so here we are, walking in that narrow, narrow passage. Isn't God the good God? Yes. That we can walk up that narrow, narrow path. I rejoice in that. And of course, I want everybody to be saved. But because of God touching your heart in a special way, you are the ones who decided, I'm going up that path to find out. Then he says, I will turn aside and see this great sight. So Moses' attention has finally got it. And yet it was not consumed. Um, when the bush is not burnt, verse number four, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called out to him in the bush. All right, so we know there's a voice coming in the bush, but wait a minute, who was in the bush? Who was in the bush? God, the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. So the angel of the Lord is in the bush, and now it says, God. So let's do our, let's do our normal thinking here when you have God and put that together. So who is the angel of the Lord? Who is the angel of the Lord is God. The angel of the Lord is God. 
Are you getting that being H man? The angel of the Lord is God. Amen. Is that exciting or why? Amen. The angel of the Lord is God. So that's why, because one line it says the angel of the Lord, and then the same bush it says God. Yeah. Unless the angel of the Lord exited and God came in. And we don't think that's the case. We think God, Elohim, Amen. and the angel of the Lord, the Mulak, the Mulak. And interesting too, when you hear the word for God and the angel of the Lord, the name of God are two different names. One is the power of God and one is the mercy of God. Interesting names, aren't they? The angel of the Lord, and you would have the Mulak, Y-H-W-H, do you remember that? And then you would have the Elohim, the mercy of God. So interesting that we can have these two names of God. And so the conclusion that I can see in there, I, I don't know if you are agreeing with me, especially you, sister, in the back there. Okay? She, uh, she says, if I disagree with you, I'll let you know. <laughs> so here we can see the power of Almighty God. Whoa. God is good. Then he says to us there, Moses, Moses. Now, everybody, when God calls you, he calls you twice, but you know, yet once. Moshe, Moshe. Okay, remember, water man, water man, right? So, remember it has a Moses in Hebrew? M-O-S-E-H, M-O-S-E-H. Moshe, Moshe, everything Moshe, Moshe. Not Shoku, Shoku, sister. Moshe, Moshe. Amen? Now, when you get your, your name called twice, it means solemnity. Now, Jesus has taught, is teaching us often that when he says to us, Amen, Amen, I say to you. When you get double amen, that means it's not the end of the prayer. We got it all backwards. Amen is never the end of prayer. It's the beginning. Sometimes people can't wait till, uh, because of your luau, waiting for that, that chap, supposed chaplain up there to, to say amen so they can eat. And their favorite word is to hear amen. But now she can, and when they say amen, all right, let's eat. Well, I, I remember being in a church gathering and one of the good clergymen was asked to, um, to say the opening prayer because he's the clergyman. And uh, so he, he was a man of girth. And he gets up, all right, bless the Lord, these are about to receive, and I'm about to grant our Lord, amen. All right, let's see. <laughs> Lord, save us, Lord, please save us. Moshe is the solemnity of your call. So one day he says, Hashemayim, Hashemayim, get out of Kodorek as soon as possible. So we, 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 can, we can see that the, the double, this is called the double Vakate. Yeah. V vocative, V O C A T I V E, double vocative, the double calling. Now notice, brothers and sisters, we call upon the name of the Lord, and what do we say sometimes? Adonai, Adonai, Lord, Lord. But Jesus warns us: Do not just cry out Adonai, Adonai, but those who do the will of my Father. Okay. Is this getting deep or what? Mm -hmm. um, so the Lord will say, Brother Peter, Brother Peter. <laughs> and he gets that call often. Young lady. I thought I meant it was finished. Uh, it, it, no, it doesn't mean it is finished. Okay. No, I thought that's it. No, it doesn't mean that. Okay. It means it's established. Okay. So there is a difference. It's established. Okay. Yes, sir. So that was, a, that was an instance, perhaps, of the visible and invisible God represented at the That's same time. One. But there's Very another one. one. The yes. angel of the Lord lets Peter out of prison. Yes, an angel. I think it's the, oh, my Bible's a mess, I guess. You want me to check again? Acts 5. Acts 5. Rita, you might have to get him a new Bible. I, I think, uh, I think I need Bible one. is. Uh, well, let's see what it says. Acts Five. Does it say the angel of the Lord? Acts five verse. 
Oh, when he let he lets them out of prison. Okay, let's see. Uh, X five. Maybe I'm wrong on the chapter. God's stand. Nope, an angel of the Lord. Okay, I'm getting a new Bible. I'm sorry. X five. Okay, I give up. <laughs> My Bible. She wants to see. See what you started. X <laughs> five. You, uh, Lord, please save the Marines. Please, Lord. Acts 519. 519, right. And then Oh, my God, that's not good. Thank you. Oh, boy. <sighs> what, what, what version do you have, sister? Well, that's your version. Mine does say But. See, now, this goes back to our study, what's the best Bible. Um, I, would, I would answer your question as, do, are you going to be a student of it, or do you just want to read it? Uh, do you really want to know what it really says? Because right, right there, an angel or the angel, there's different messages in there. So the angel, as Jesus, could be him after his resurrection appearing. Kind of. yes. Just as he, you know, yes. Kind of yes. does. I thought my note was correct so far, it's still correct. And I, Sister of Berea, you're going to go keep looking. Are you right? Because Yes. When you're called twice, doesn't that also mean um, the surety? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll get my message this week. Father Bill, Father Bill. <laughs> All right. All right. Everybody with you back in Exodus now? Thank you for your, your looking around the scriptures. All right, back with everybody. Understand? Every with me so far? Are you getting good stuff? Yes. yes. Now, when the Lord saw that He turned, I'm in verse four, chapter three of Exodus, verse four. When the Lord saw that He turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moshe, Moshe, and He said, "Here I am, Lord." Now, this is such a this is such a great expression in Hebrew. Are you okay? Chene. Here I am. I'm here. Chene. Remember, we, we, we share that with you many times. Behold, I'm here. I'm here. So it's a strong reference to God, I'm here to serve you. So every time you say, I am, and you can see that sense too in Genesis 22, when our friend Abraham said, Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Okay, good stuff. And then he says, then he said, um, verse number five, do not come near. Now, to come near in the Bible is a whole understanding of being a priest. Why couldn't he come near? Because he wasn't circumcised. So if you were to turn the page to chapter 4, he was going to um, go to Egypt and his whole family and the son and everything else, they weren't circumcised. So who, who went on a circumcision spree? His wife, what was her name? <laughs> Zippor. <laughs> All right, she, um, so you, you got, if you're gonna be in the covenant with God, you gotta be what? Circumcised, so. To come near means you gotta be t totally prepared for this journey. And we gotta be in a covenant relationship with the Lord. Do not come near, put off your shoes. now. God does not want anything between you and Him. And when He, when he does that, even the leather on His feet. Now, just to give you a picture of what the shoes look like, they weren't the flips that people wear today. They, they covered the entire back of the foot. You've seen those kind of sandals, right? So, because they had to walk on rocks and, every, and the like. So what did they have to do? He had to take off that much of leather so that he could totally prostrate himself in front of the Almighty God. Because God wants to be worshipped and adored by each of us, doesn't he? So we, we worship and adore him. So he has to take off your feet. And then we have a song. This is holy ground. I'm standing on holy ground. Now when you stand on holy ground, as we do have upstairs, but many of us do not know that. We don't act appropriately. 
Even when told, it doesn't dawn on many people to act accordingly to what's going on in the burning bush. The greater than the burning bush is upstairs. So take off your sandals, you're on holy ground. Wow. Wow. How many think you could worship like that? And then he says, now, I'm reminded, again, when the Baptist would say, I'm not worthy to, to take off the master's sandals. Because it was so demeaning. But John is saying, do you know who's in your midst? I'll go to the most demeaning effort in my life to take his sandals off. I want to worship him. I want to give him the glory. That's why I say to you, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Singular sin. Singular. So now, Moses, Moses. That's his original name in Hebrew, Tobiah. Remember, remember M.T. Masoretic text? Remember, I told, we just told you that. When you look at the ancient, ancient way of reading the Hebrew, his name was Tobiah, T-O-B-I-A-H, which means God is good. You can read about that in Exodus chapter two, verse one, two, and three. You could also read about that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, 24, and 25. If you want to see, it says he was a goodly child. And how do you say goodly? Tobiah. So that's Moses' original name, according to the MT. What did we learn MT is tonight? The Masoretic Text. Good stuff. Then he said, do not come near, put off your shoes from your feet, for the place in which you are standing is holy ground. So right there, God established, when you meet God, wherever you meet him, you are on holy, holy ground. And God wants nothing that you do to separate yourself, nothing that you have, even leather like that. Take it off. He wants to meet you down. Why? What does a priest have to do when he comes in the presence of God? Now, I'm meeting God like the high priest would eventually in the Holy of Holies. Do you remember? He'd go in there once a year. What's the day called? Yom Kippur. You all heard Yom Kippur. When he would go in there, what would happen on that day? He had to be very careful. What was shown? It was shown only a few things. His face, his hands, and his feet. So now, what does God say to him? Come before me that you can't even look upon this sight. You've got to put your face in the sand, don't you? Come down before me. This is holy ground. We've always had pilgrimages to spots where holy people met God. And then hopefully in uh, April of next year, we will go on journeys to meet where holy people met God. And I don't know about you, when I'm on that spot where they were, I just feel a connection. And I just say, Lord, I want to be holy too. And I want to, I want to encounter you, Lord, as these holy people did. Amen? Okay, ready to go on? Are, are you getting the idea here? Yes? Mm -hmm. And um, then he says to them, you're standing. This, you're standing on holy ground. But now, what does he say there? And we really get this wrong. Do not come near, put up your shoes from your feet for the place in which you're standing is holy ground. And then God says, I am. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, what gets me excited about this passage is Jesus uses this passage to promote the teaching on the resurrection. God can never put his name next to a dead person. So when the Sadducees were questioning him about the resurrection, and remember they told that ridiculous story um, if one guy dies and he has seven brothers and 
there was a law that if you if you die, you got to take the widow and seven times. Who will she be married to in heaven? Remember that that teaching that that they tried to teach Jesus, and Jesus says you don't understand. And so the night that Jesus rose from the dead in Emmaus, <coughs> this, is, this is one of the passages he used. You've got to understand, I never put my name around dead people. So what are we to include? Now watch this. God of the Father, Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Now if you're Jewish, even to today, who do they think are going to be the first resurrected people? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in Luke 14, Jesus says, these people are seated at the table of the Lord in heaven. But Jesus also says before that, in John 11 and 25, what is he saying? I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever dies believing in me will live forever. So when you could see this passage and Jesus facing his nemesis, the Sadducees, did the Sadducees believe in the resurrection? No. But what passage does he quote? This one. So he says that Abraham, the God of the Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, Yaakov. Then Moses hid his face. So now notice what does Moses do to make the ground holy? He prostrates himself down. He hid his face. He just came. He came to look upon this phenomenal sight. Who does he see in there? The presence of God, the angel of the Lord, so strong that this is an awesome sight. Now watch this. This is really good. What Moses had to do by worshiping God is eventually to be elevated to live in the fire with him. When the three were thrown into the fire in the book of Daniel, what were they doing? They were singing God's praises, and they were singing so magnificently beautiful, that's why the Son of Man did what? He came. The Son of Man came and stood right there to protect them. So what happens when they came out, there was not even a smell of smoke on their garments, not one hair on their head was singed. So here, brothers and sisters, what a powerful statement to understand who the angel of the Lord is. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Hello? Where's God, everybody? In the bush. Hello? Are you getting this? But who's in the bush? What do we what do we just call him? The angel of the Lord. Hello. Are you getting this? Is there, is anybody drawing connection? Is anybody getting like this is really good? Amen. Good stuff. Our time is ticking out. Sister Slice. Uh, Father, you were saying that um, Moses has to take the sandals off of his feet because this is holy ground. And you can't have anything of the world that you've trampled on touch the Holy Ghost. Is this the same thing that Paul is trying to relate to us when he says we are now the temples of God once we have accepted Christ? So now that holiness is now inside of us, and so we never join anything up with what's unclean because now the holiness is inside of us. That's right. That's right. Now, go a little step further. I don't know if I'm even going to make sense sharing this with you. We should not be too excited about the things of this earth. In fact, we should live holy, simple lives that they really don't make a difference to us. And I've always been determined to just, by God's grace, Hopefully the Lord will supply me a bed and uh, a little shower every morning so I can look gorgeous like I am now. <laughs> and uh, a flat screen TV, if, if it's there, it's fine. Just to check out to see when the second coming is coming. <laughs> so, I mean, outside that, 
And the Lord should take away the flat screen TV. So be it. So I, I, I really, I don't need much. I don't need much. And that, that's all I require. I, I believe, and when people ask me, oh, what do you want or what do you like, I said, whatever. And they're like, you're very easy to please because I'm setting my mind on the kingdom and all of this is just passing away, all right? I want to show you, um, I want to show you that passage in the Bible, and then, we'll, then we'll look at a few more um, instances. Does everybody capture the idea of the angel of the Lord? Okay, I thought I was going to go further, but I'm not. I just want to show you where the angel of the Lord makes appearance. I'll just give you a list of the, of, of the people, okay? And um, then, we'll, then we're going to look at the passage which Jacob wrestled with the angel. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that passage. Um, uh, the ones that had this theophany experience, where it says the angel, Hagar. How many ever heard of Hagar? Um, Abraham. Jacob, which we're going to do. Moses. There's a very famous one, um, which I think we can look there now. Uh, Manoah. Have you ever heard of Manoah? The reason, Manoah. The reason why I say Manoah because when I look at you, you, you just look at me like you just did with that blank stare. All right, just go with me to chapter. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to chapter 13 of Judges, and then we're gonna go back to Jacob, and then we'll pick up a new topic. Okay, go all the way back now to um, Judges 13. And this is Samson's mother. Happy Mother's Day, Samson, Manoah, and, and his father, Manoah. Okay, now I just want to show you who wrote Judges. We don't know, do we? Maybe with me in Judges 13? Does everybody understand that passage from Exodus? Was that good stuff? Okay, we're looking for the angel. Are you here, angel? Okay. We can see the angel of the Lord. I just want to show you where it says the angel. 13, 3. 13, 3, 13, 13. You got, you got the 3 there? 13, 3. Okay, there it is again. 13, 6. 13, 6, and several times. So let, let's look at this now. Remember, he's going to be the, uh, this is called, by the way, the angels, the angels set up what is called an Annunciation. Now, with the Annunciation, who appeared in the Annunciation of Jesus? Was it was the, the angel? No, it was Gabriel, remember? So we don't have the angel, we have, clearly it was Gabriel. And he, Gabriel visited um, uh, Zechariah, Luke 1, and, and Luke 1 later on uh, also. So uh, he appears a lot in uh, the, the formation of the Annunciation. Are you with me? All right, as we be, um, we, we've been going, and we need to wrap up in a few minutes. We've been going an hour and 15 minutes. Yes? Okay. In Judges 13 to 6, it says the angel of God. And then on verse 13, it says the angel of the Lord. What's the difference? The same. We'll get there now. Ready? Now, so this is Sam's, this is called um, in the Old Testament an Annunciation. Now, when you when you go, to, if you if anybody here is a church, daily church person, during Advent we read this story. But to this day, I never heard anybody really get into it. I'm like, why don't you teach the people the word? More than three minutes, sister. More than three minutes, amen? So, everybody with me in verse two? There was a man, uh, a certain man called uh, Man of Zorah, of the tribe of the Danites. Now, the Danites, how many tribes are, were there? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. The from the tribe of Dan, which is all the way up in the northern, and Brother Peter was up there with his B&H. That's a B&H sound like a hot dog or something sometimes. And it was, it was the town Dan up there, and uh, the, the Danites were not a very good tribe. In fact, when you read in Revelation 7 today, 
They're not on the list. Because they it was a tribe that was very poisoned. Poisoned. Because of their the way they they treated and, and everything else. Whose whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had no children. Remember, if you're barren and have no children, you're called what? A curse. And underline verse 3. The angel of the Lord. There it is again. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said, Behold, bum, 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 bum. You are barren and have no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Does that, name, does that sound familiar to you? So notice here, the Lord is saying that to him. Therefore, beware and trick. Now, what he's going to have to do, like John the Baptist, he's going to have to take the Nazarite vow. The Nazarite vow is mentioned in Numbers 6. You had to take your children and so dedicate them. Now, we believe Paul did that in the book of Acts. He took the Nazarite vow. Number 6, if you want to read that. Verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in number 6. And also, we believe that John the Baptist went to the Qumran people, and we believe very possibly Jesus could have been in the, with the Qumran community. Pardon? So, um, Samson. Samson, yes, and Samson. Well, this is about Samson. This is, and the word Samson means um, from the, the Shemesh, from the sun, coming from the sun. S U N. Okay. The son. So, what a nice name. You're called the son, as you and sister. You know, this is kind of strange, Father, because the Jews have such a hard time accepting the fact that God came into the form of man, that this, this virgin would bear a child. And yet, when you look at the book of Judges, we see that a barren woman is being told that she's going to bear a child. So why should that be so strange to the Jews when it happens in the Incarnation? That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's your job right now. Go ask them. I don't think so. <laughs> the angel of the Lord, if you underline there, the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman, Behold, you are barren and have no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Put in there the Nazarite vow, verse 4. Therefore be aware and drink no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head. Numbers chapter 6. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth, and he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. So when you take the Nazarite vow, it means for deliverance. Then the woman came and told her husband, a man of God. Now notice what she calls the angel of the Lord, a man of God. A man of God, um, can, you, can you see you're trying to explain this? <laughs> a man of God came to me and his countenance was like that, the countenance of an angel of God. You know, this guy looked like an angel. Hello? So it, it reminds me of our friend Stephen who was dying and he looked up and he saw the countenance. So what does it mean, the countenance? Countenance means he's looking at you. So, how many know God is looking at you right now? Was well, like the countenance of the angel of God, very terrible. I didn't ask him what he, where he was from. Hello? I was telling people yesterday that when the evil one comes, he only does one thing. He descends, descends, and descends because he's on his own journey from heaven to hell. He's not in hell yet, but your job, your job and my job is to ascend, ascend, and ascend, and ascend, and go up. That's why we have a wonderful feast called the Ascension. Because if you see God, you want to see him more, better, and clearer, and clearer still. So as a believer in Jesus, you are ascending to the place of where Abba Father Amen. is. Good stuff? Yeah. A man of God came to me, his countenance was like that of the angel, very terrible. I did not ask him where he was from. He did not tell me his name, but he said to me, Behold, bum, 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 you shall conceive and bear a son, so the drink no wine or strong drink, eat nothing unclean, for the boy shall be a Nazarite 
to God from birth on the day of his death. So Manoah entreated the Lord and says, O Lord, I beg you, let the man of God you sent once again to us teach us what we're to do with the boy. Notice he's talking to the Lord. And by the way, he was talking to the Lord. Hmm, it's kind of funny. Send him, send him again. Send him again, Lord. What a prayer. Send him again. And God listened to the voice of Manoah and underline there, verse 9, the angel, ever see the angel? The angel of God came to the woman as she sat in the field, but Noah, her husband, was not with her. The woman ran in haste. Does this sound Christmassy? The woman ran in haste and told her husband, Behold, bum, 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 ba, ba, bum, the man who came to me the other day was appeared to me. When you read Daniel chapter 10, as we, we did with, with our, our friend um, Gabriel, Remember what Gabriel is called in Daniel 10, the man, the man, the man. One day a, a woman came, went into my refrigerator and took out a turkey. And Eileen was in the parking lot and she said, Father, was a Jew? Just give out a turkey? I said, no. Well, one just flew out of our kitchen. And the woman said, the man in there said, I can have it, the man. I said, I hope she enjoys it. I hope she does. So the man gave it to her. And the woman ran in haste. Behold, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and, and came to the man. So notice that the, the, what do we see in here? Does everybody can see the incarnation again? Remember I told you before that when an angel appears, appears male. Are you the man who spoke to this woman? He said, I am. Bum, 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 bum. Can you see? Oh, this is very incarnational lingo. Amen. Now, when your words come true, what is to be the boy's manner of life and what is to do? Underline verse 13. The angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that comes from the vine. She's got to be prepared too, yes? <laughs> Neither let her drink wine or strong drink or eat any unclean thing. All that I command to her, let her observe. Manoah said to, underline there, verse 15, the angel of the Lord, Lord, please let us detain you and prepare a kid for you. So what do they want to do is, as often seen in the book of Judges, there was a person called Gideon that wanted to have a lunch with the angel. Now when, when an angel has lunch with you, they can't do what? They can't eat it. Because they're not corporeal. So, God wants, uh, that's why, isn't the Incarnation so good? Jesus is corporeal now. So when we go to our eternal banquet, Lord willing, all of us, we're going to eat with Him. We're going to eat shobo shobo. <laughs> and yaki bolognese. Okay? We're, we're, so, uh, it's, it's a banquet of the Lamb. If you detain me, I will not eat your food, but if you make a burnt offering, then offer it to the Lord. Underline that because he can't what? Eat it. For Manoah did not know that he was the angel of the Lord. Underline that. See the angel of the Lord again? A lot, a lot of angels of the Lord in here. Manoah said to the angel, underline that, the angel, what is your name that when your words come true we may honor you? Now, that is the same. Now watch this. This is really, really good. I'm studying the word honor. You know, you heard that, you heard me say about a million times, honor means highly esteem. You've heard the expression, honor your father and your mother. Can I give you another insight into what honor means? It means to so be blessed with the rewards that God can give you. Yes. Do you like that? So if we honor our mother and, and a little dog on the side, that turns over and wants his belly rubbed. When you honor your mother, you're getting, you're honoring the Lord for the rewards that He will bless you with. Wow. I think we should honor our mothers, right? Absolutely. Even though one lady gets two or three meals a day. Right? One right after another. Let's honor them. Amen? And everybody here should be honored for special days in your lives, for special accomplishments. And then he says there, good stuff. And the angel Lord said to him, why do you ask my name, verse 18, seeing it is 
it is wonderful. Hello? What's the name of Jesus? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. What's Isaiah chapter 9? Wonderful. Wonderful God, Prince of Peace. Do you remember that in Isaiah 9? Is this getting interesting or what? Okay, amen. Now, we need to be constantly talking about the wonderful deeds of God. That's what you should be doing every day. Good stuff? Good stuff. I'm the only one that's enjoying this. <laughs> so Manoah took the kid with the cereal offering and offered upon the rock to the Lord, to him who works wonders. Wow. And when the flame came up toward heaven from the altar, underline again, the angel of the Lord ascended into the flame of the altar, so that the, the angel went up. Does this sound familiar? How is Zechariah going to see Gabriel in the flame? Hello? How many of the flames going up, but it's coming back down? Amen? What did Moses see God? In the what? The flame. What did angels like to come through? The flame. The flame. The flame. <laughs> Okay. The plane, the plane. The plane, the plane, okay. <laughs> and look what happened. And uh, while Manoah and his wife looked on, they fell on their face. There's prostration again. Fell. Did we just read that? Yes. And the angel, look at verse 21. The angel, no more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that it was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die. Mut demut. Let me give you that in Hebrew. M U T. That's the word for death. And demut, D E M U T. Mut de mut. Ever say mut de mut? M U T? New word? D E M U T. M U T, mut. A new word? De mut. Mut de mut. M U T? New word? D E M U T. Mut de mut. Now, what does that mean? Die, or we shall die. <laughs> die, we're dead. Don't you like the Hebrew? Isn't it much better than English sometimes? Isn't it more expressive than we can? And I just wish there was a Bible. Maybe I should write it, huh? Which the real meanings in there. Amen. Amen. Yes. How many would like to have a Bible I like would. that? I'd like that. And so I'll put in there, "Moot the moot for you. Die, we shall die." But that's why. That's why this book is so fascinating and so true. So what what he's saying there, verse twenty two. And Manoah said to his wife, Mut the Mut! By the way, where did we hear Mut the Mut before? With Eve. In, it, in Genesis 3, dying we shall die. The first time we have Mut the Mut. Dying we shall die. Amen? Mut the Mut, baby. Mut the Mut. And then uh, verse 23, But his wife said to him, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering, the cereal offering at her hand. Now, a cereal offering goes back to the book of Leviticus, uh, of the blessings of the grain. So were they prosperous? Where did they discover this angel, everybody? Where were they? Nobody remembers? They were out field. in the field. They were on the fields. So what were they offering? Cereal. <laughs> what does that mean? It means this is what God has produced for us. We offer God back what He gave us. So that's why you have the kid, which is the goat, right? So notice, notice you see the sacrifice and then the grain. So the sacrifice with what will be offered to God. Hmm. We have the lamb and we have the bread. Are you getting that? Yeah. Hmm. Somebody say hmm. And then the woman bore a son and called him Shemesh. Samson. The son, S U N. And the boy grew and blessed, and the Lord blessed him. Underline there, verse 25. The Spirit of the Lord began to stir, to stir him in Machanichthan between Zor and Eshtaol. So here now we have the presence of the Holy Spirit coming upon. Shemesh, Samson, the, the sun that person. Wow. So here we have the Holy Spirit really doing a lot of stirring. Wow. That's the angel of the Lord. Mm. 
Now next time we meet, which will be in about two weeks, because next week is Father Steve's <laughs> soiree, and then we're going to go to Biscataway to do their procession and everything else. So if you plan to come, here's my recommendation. If you want to join us next Sunday night, um, it's a buffet next week. So be done eating by 5.30 and get in the car and you'll be in the procession by 7. Okay? That's a recommendation if you plan to go. If you plan to stay at the Father Steve's reception, by all means, stay in and have a good time. Amen. By the way, next week's dinner will be fabulous. Okay? So uh, there'll be a little light reception here for his 25th, and then in, uh, then at uh, Amalfi. And Peter's going for the meal already. He's, <laughs> he's salivating. <laughs> okay, so, so we will resume here with, we're going to do Jacob and the angel, and then I want to show you... Um, the when the angel bumped off 138,000 people, and then we're going to look at Jesus and all the times angels were around Jesus. Do you know there's a lot of times angels were around Jesus? A lot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Father, we just pray and we just bless you in this Bible study. The angel of the Lord, and he is our, he is all that we, we have is the Lord, and he even sends these 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 angels who watch over us. So help us to study your word and give us clarity of preaching and teaching. And may this study enlighten our minds to follow you even more closely because we always are with you on holy ground. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen.